Look at the picture attentively. Can you say who didn't help to build the doghouse? Yep, it's the man on the right. He's holding a brick, but the doghouse is made of wood. Sarah was a popular guitar player in a rock band. On Friday, the band was going to have a big gig. Sarah's bandmates were waiting for her, but the girl was very late. Eventually, she did show up, but it wasn't Sarah. It was her twin sister, Alice. She was envious of Sarah, so she locked her sister in a room, took her clothes and the guitar, and pretended to be a band member. But as soon as the musicians saw fake Sarah, they immediately knew she wasn't their bandmate. How did they understand? Look at how long the girl's nails are. But you need to have short nails to play the guitar. A man came to a fruit market to sell watermelons. After he sold half of them and half of a watermelon, he saw he had one watermelon left. How many watermelons did he bring to the market? He came there with three watermelons. Cheryl ran into the house, extremely worried. I set off as soon as I heard the news, she told the police officer. I was at my parents' house in another town. I left a week ago and was supposed to stay there for at least 10 more days. What's happened to my husband? Somebody hit Mr. Brown on the head. He was taken to a hospital, but he's going to be okay. I've been questioning the suspects. Mr. Brown's secretary said, He sent me to his business partner earlier in the morning. Some important documents needed signatures. The cook said, I haven't left the kitchen today. Mr. Brown wanted me to prepare a meal for the whole family. The housekeeper said, I didn't hear anything. I was doing some household chores all day long. After that, I was so tired, I decided to take a nap. The detective realized who the culprit was in no time. Who was it? It was the cook. Mrs. Brown's wife was out of town. There was no need to cook a lot all day long. Olivia was running a marathon. Right before the finish line, she did her best and outran the person who was running in second place. The woman was happy. She was going to win. But in a few seconds, she got very disappointed. Why? Olivia was in second place. She was faster than the person in the second place, but not the first. Look at this image attentively. Can you guess which person is a ghost? Look at the woman on the right. She has no legs and is just floating through the air. Amanda loved dogs very much. One day, she was walking in the park and saw a lovely corgi. The dog was friendly, and Amanda even petted the animal. Soon, the pooch's owner appeared, and the girl asked him how old the dog was. Well, in two years, Luna will be twice as old as she was five years ago. Amanda nodded and continued her walk. And did you understand how old the dog was? Luna is 12 years old. Liza worked as a teaching assistant at a college. That day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Lisa knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who was it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his arm. Jacob wakes up locked in a basement. He has no idea how it happened or who is behind this. Near his bed, he finds a note. 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals triangle. Explain this and you'll be free. Can you help Jacob get out of the basement?
stack the first number and the second one that is flipped backwards. And you'll get a fish, number 8, and a triangle. Two guards were looking in different directions. One had to make sure there was no danger coming from the west. The other was turned toward the east. At one point, one of the guards asked the other, Why are you smiling? But how could he know his companion was smiling? The men were indeed looking in the opposite directions, but they weren't standing back to back. They were facing each other. Brian was walking down the stairs when his foot slipped and he tumbled. When the guy came to his senses, he discovered he was mostly unharmed, but he couldn't remember anything. Suddenly, two women entered the house. They looked exactly the same. When they found out what had happened, each of them started to claim Brian was her husband. Can you help the guy understand which one is his real wife? It's Rachel. She has a tattoo on the same arm as the girl in the wedding photo. Oliver was sailing his yacht when a storm started. The yacht sank in the middle of the ocean. After swimming for hours, the guy finally reached a deserted island. He saw several men there. They told Oliver they would keep him locked in one of the caves on the island. Oliver agreed, but asked them to grant him one last wish. When he told the men what this wish was, they set him free. Why? He said, I want the smartest of you to lock me there. Oh, by the way, you get extra points if you caught my error in the description. An island with several men on it is not deserted. One of Kenneth's professors at university had an unconventional way of grading his students. On Wednesday, Kenneth and his friends had to write a test, but their professor gave each of them a picture. You need to figure out how many people there are in this image. Those of you who will come up with the correct answer won't need to write the test. Can you help Kenneth figure out the right number of people? There are six people in the picture. Five of them are visitors. And one more person is looking through a peephole in the painting on the right. Emily was walking in the park when she saw two teenagers sitting on a bench. They were arguing who should pay for riding an electric scooter. Each of them claimed it was the other one who used the scooter. Emily didn't need much time to understand who had to pay. Can you figure it out too? Look at the footprints. The girl was the one to ride the electric scooter. Dennis is taking part in a competition. If his last answer is correct, he'll get a prize, an expensive watch. But first, he needs to figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy. The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. It's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson wanted to celebrate their wedding anniversary. They were going to organize an extravagant party and invite hundreds of guests. But Mrs. Anderson was worried about all the expensive stuff they had at their villa. The couple decided to invite a detective to look after the guests. And indeed, in the middle of the party, the detective noticed a thief. Look at the people gathered in the garden and try to spot the criminal. It's the guy on the left. He's trying to steal a woman's bracelet. Look at the picture attentively. What is the missing number? It's 4. All these numbers indicate how many times the lines cross in each case. There are 100 books on a shelf. To count off 10 of them, you'll need 10 seconds. So, how much time will you spend counting off 70 books? Just 30 seconds! 
You need this time to count off 30 books, and the rest will make 70. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. October 7th, May 3rd, August 1st, January 3rd. Can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets? Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. Mark was going to an important business meeting. He was running a bit late. That's why he was driving fast. Unfortunately, the man got into a car accident. Both he and the other driver were okay, but the cars were badly damaged. Mark called the police. When they arrived, Mark explained the situation. I was driving fast, but I wasn't breaking any rules. Suddenly, a car pulled out in front of me. I didn't have enough time to brake. The other driver exclaimed, This whole accident is your fault. I was driving slowly, talking to my wife about our weekend plans, and then you appeared out of nowhere. The police officers immediately understood who was responsible for the accident. Do you know it? It was the other driver. He was alone in his car. It means he was talking to his wife on the phone, which is illegal. Detective Mitchell was following a bank robber. But after the criminal turned the corner, he seemed to vanish into thin air. After wandering around for a while, the detective came across a small park with a lake. Right on the shore, there were several marble statues. The man was about to pass by when something drew his attention. He realized where the criminal was. Can you figure it out? One of the statues is looking at its watch. It's the bank robber. James escaped from prison and ran to the countryside. Suddenly, on a small, dark road, he saw a police car heading in his direction. James ran toward the car for some time, then jumped off the road and rushed into the woods. Why did he run toward the car first? James was in the middle of a bridge when he saw the car. He had to run toward the vehicle to get off of the bridge. On the weekend, Ashley wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing. But her father didn't let her go. So Ashley asked if she could go visit her grandparents instead. They had recently moved to a nice one-story country house. This time, her father happily agreed. But Ashley only used this as an excuse to leave home. In reality, the girl went to the party. When she came back home after the weekend, her father asked her what she had been doing at her grandparents' place. Ashley said she had been mostly studying upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. But he didn't even call his parents to ask if what Ashley said was true. How did he understand? Ashley said she'd spent her days upstairs, but her grandparents lived in a one-story house. I guess Ashley needed to get her story straight. Michael wants to play some games on his brother's computer. The brother usually allows him to do it, but only when Michael manages to break the code. Today, the hint is Ava, 0, Kate, 200, Beth, 500, Olivia, 0, Avery, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives you 200 points, and each vowel takes away 100 points. In Ava, there's one consonant that gives 200 points. But then, each vowel takes away 100, so it results in zero. In Kate, two consonants make it 400 points, and two vowels take away 200, which leaves us with 200 points. Now you get the pattern. So, following this logic, there are two consonants in Avery. That's 400 points but three valves take away 300 points altogether. It means the password is 100. Esme got lost in the forest, again. She was wandering around all day long. 
Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house where a witch lived. Esme had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house, petted the witch's cat, and asked for help. The witch had a problem of her own. If you manage to solve it, I'll let you go. Look, I have two apples. I want to cut them so all three of us, me, you, and the cat, get the same portion. (laughs) But my magical knife can only make one cut. How can Esme solve this problem? She should put the apples together and make a diagonal cut across them. There'll be four pieces, but the two smaller ones will make the third portion, and it'll be equal in size to the other two. An old king had no heirs to the throne, but he needed one, so he asked the smartest young people in the kingdom to gather at the palace. He gave them each an egg. Then he said that whoever took the best care of their egg and could grow a beautiful bird would be the next king or queen. Half a year later, the young people came back with gorgeous birds of different kinds. Only one girl, Scarlet, came back empty-handed. She said she couldn't do it. Surprisingly, the king announced her to be the next queen. Can you explain why? The king gave everybody a simple rock instead of a real egg, which means that no one could possibly grow a bird. Everyone else cheated except for Scarlet. And the king realized she was the only one who would make a good and fair queen. Ariana wanted to have some pocket money, so she started to work at a bookstore. At the end of her first day, she noticed that one book of the collection was missing. There was no record of someone buying it, so it must have been stolen. Ariana was an honest girl. She went to the manager and admitted she hadn't noticed the theft. But the manager just laughed and said that nothing was missing. Take another look at the bookshelf and try to figure out why. The collection only has 8 books. The ninth book is actually book number 6. But it's standing upside down and in the wrong place. Mrs. Miller has four daughters, Abby, Beth, Charlie, and Danny. They're identical quadruplets. Once, the woman asked the girl's teacher to let Abby go after the first class. She had an important appointment. The teacher couldn't tell the teenagers apart, and the girls wanted to have some fun. So they gave her a hint. Charlie is somewhere in the middle. Danny is on the left side of Beth and on the right of Abby. Abby is right next to Danny. Can you help the teacher identify all the girls and find out which one is Abby? So we know Charlie is somewhere in the middle, and since Danny has someone on both sides, she's somewhere in the middle too. If Charlie is the second, Danny must be the third. And since Danny is on the left side of Beth, Beth must be the fourth, and Abby the first. But it can't be true, because Abby and Uh Danny are supposed to be next to each other. But if we switch Charlie and Danny, Uh Danny will be right next to Abby, but still on the left side of Beth. It means that the right order is Abby, Danny, Charlie, and Beth. Abby is the first girl. Mrs. Jones' friend called her to say she had just seen one of her sons at a party, but she wasn't sure which one it was. Mrs. Jones never allowed her sons to go to parties. Mm -mm. She asked them if any of them had been there, but the guys denied breaking the rules. Mark said he had been studying. John said he had been practicing for his piano class. And Ethan said he had been playing computer games. Can you figure out who's lying? Ethan. Look, he has a lipstick stain on his collar. A company was hiring a new manager. They wanted full commitment, so they didn't want this person to have a family. Ben and Rob came to the interview. Both of them said they weren't fathers and didn't plan to become ones. Rob had a flawless resume. But the company still hired Ben, even though he wasn't as good as Rob. Why?
Before the interview, Ben had to take his teenage daughter to her ballet class. After that, he accidentally brought her pink ballet backpack with him. The HR specialist noticed it and realized Ben had a daughter. In June, all students had their final math exam. The professor looked at them and understood that one of them was going to cheat. Who was it? And how did the man figure it out? It must be this girl. It's June, and everyone is wearing t-shirts and shorts. But she's put on a sweater and high boots. She must be hiding something. George and Carter are cooking dinner for tonight. Can you see who is doing something wrong? It's Carter. Look, he's using rat poison as a salad dressing instead of oil by accident. I think I'll skip the salad tonight. Liam and Owen were camping in a forest. Suddenly, they saw a bear near their tent. Liam decided to run away, and Owen froze and stood still. Who is in danger? Liam, the bear is likely to start chasing him, and the animal will definitely be faster. If you ever find yourself in such a situation, it's better to keep your cool. Slowly move backward, keeping eye contact. Michelle and Emma were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Michelle hid in her car that was in the middle of the beach, and Emma just kept swimming away from the shore. Who is not smart? Emma. She should get out of the water immediately and join Michelle in the car. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. Two friends, Tom and James, went swimming after school. They found a nice spot and decided to jump from a cliff. Can you tell who's in danger? Tom. He should have examined the bottom more thoroughly. There are rocks under the cliff he chose to jump from. Oh boy. Camilla and Rachel were cleaning the house. At some point, both women entered their teenage children's bedrooms. Camilla noticed her son's phone and decided to check it. And Rachel found her daughter's diary and opened it. Who's in trouble? Both mothers aren't doing that great, checking other people's personal things. But Camilla is about to get busted. Her son is about to walk into the room. Elizabeth and Mackenzie are both late for work. They're driving over the speed limit. Who isn't smart? Elizabeth. Too many random things are lying around in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. Two guys, Mike and David, came to the prom looking gorgeous. But one of them isn't as rich as he wants to seem. Can you tell who it is? Look at Mike's shoes. They're all dirty. He must have been walking to the prom because he couldn't afford a car. But I'll bet his girlfriend loves him for the great guy he is, not how much money is in his pocket. Megan and Jennifer are the most popular girls at school, but one of them is poorer than the other. Can you tell who it is? It's Megan. Look at her purse. It looks like Gucci, but the logo is wrong. It must be a cheap copy of the bag. But Megan saved a lot of money, so maybe she is the smartest. Two families are going on vacation. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which family spends more money. The family on the left. Their bags have stickers on them showing they travel regularly. Or maybe the family on the right just prefers collecting fridge mags over stickers. Detective James Anderson stopped the man who was leaving a clothing store. 
The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They are both for the same hand. A phone call woke Detective Anderson early in the morning. My house has been burgled, Mr. Harrison shouted. When James arrived at the man's house, he heard the following story. While I was away on business, my neighbor Adam was looking after my house. That's when Adam decided to chip in. I heard some noise coming from Mr. Harrison's house yesterday. I came up to the window to check if everything was okay. It was very cold, and the window was completely frozen. I breathed on the glass to unfreeze it a bit and saw that everything inside was in a mess. I immediately called Mr. Harrison. And now, Detective Anderson said, tell us where the stuff you stole from your neighbor is. How did James understand Adam was guilty? Windows freeze from the inside, not outside. A rich man's wife disappeared from the hotel where she was staying. Detective Anderson had to inform and question her husband. He found the man on his own island. I've been here for the last two months. I asked my family and staff not to come and distract me. I'm writing a book. And over the past several weeks, I've been working from early morning to late evening. I haven't even left this cabin. Anderson immediately understood the man was lying. Ow. There's only a thick notebook and a pen on the man's desk. If he had been writing as much as he claimed, the ink would have finished long ago. Mr. Dillon sold beautiful rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged. His store was a mess. These guys ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Detective Anderson immediately understood that Mr. Dillon was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out? Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. Janet called the police. I was crossing the road when a car almost ran me down. I fell down and hit my head. When the police officers arrived at the place of the accident, Janet showed them the car that, as she thought, had almost hit her. The driver arrived at that moment. He denied doing it. Detective Anderson asked Janet to calm down. It really wasn't the car they needed to look for. How did he understand it? It was raining when Janet was crossing the road, but there's a dry spot under the man's car. It means it had been standing there for a long time and couldn't have hit Janet. Look at these two bloggers. As you can see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes. But there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right is probably trying to save money at the moment. The logo on her bag looks like the Chanel logo, but it's written Gucci underneath. Detective Anderson was on a train. He had very nice fellow travelers. They were talking and laughing when the train entered a tunnel. Everything was plunged into darkness for several minutes. When the train left the tunnel, one of the passengers, Ella, exclaimed, My diamond brooch! It's gone! Everyone started talking nervously, looking at one another. That's when Anderson calmly said, I know who took the brooch. I saw it. How could he see it? One of the travelers had a watch with luminous hands. And when this guy moved his hand to take the brooch, James noticed it. It was a scorching hot day when Larry made a bet with his friends. The guy told them that water produced by different companies tastes different too. 
At that time, they were chilling in the garden of one of Larry's friends, drinking water and lemonade. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one you'll bring from the kitchen. I noticed it was another producer. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Larry the money he had won, but Detective Anderson, yep, he was there too, cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water that had been outside for several hours was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research. But then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Detective Anderson was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman. She was drowning. James immediately left his shoes and backpack on the ground and dove into the water. Luckily, he was in time. When James was pulling the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. "Uh, Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? James asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right. Detective Anderson found out a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. He arrived there and detained three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some rugs, old dirty jeans, a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Detective Anderson's friend, Jose, hurt his knee while playing frisbee. The doctor let the guy stay at home, but by no means was he allowed to get up from his bed. Anderson was also there, and he promised the doctor to look after his friend. But at some point, he had to go away for several hours. He asked his sister Sarah to take care of Jose. When James returned, Sarah told him Jose had followed the instructions and had been sleeping for the whole day. But when Anderson entered his friend's room, he immediately realized the man had gotten up. How did he understand this? Jose moved his bedside lamp from the desk to his nightstand and plugged it in. Detective Anderson's sister, Sarah, was married to Michael, a professional cyclist. One Saturday morning, James came to visit them and noticed that everyone was extremely nervous. It turned out Michael was going to have a challenging cycling tournament. I promise I'll bring you the bouquet they give to the winner, Michael told Sarah. Four hours later, he indeed came back with beautiful flowers. But James realized right away Michael hadn't won the tournament. How? The flowers are actually from Sarah's garden. Detective Anderson was driving along a dangerous mountain road. Suddenly, he hit the brakes. He saw a man sitting on the side of the road crying. It turned out the man didn't manage to control his car. It fell off the road, and the man got thrown out of the window. Right now, his very expensive vehicle was beyond repair. Could you be my witness when I prepare the documents for my insurance company? James agreed, but asked the man to show him what was inside the car. The man took the key out of his pocket and unlocked the damaged vehicle. I won't take part in this fraud, Detective Anderson said. 
Why did he think the man was lying? If the man had been thrown out of the car, the key would still be in the ignition. Detective Anderson's friend Hannah called him and asked the man to visit her. She said it had to do with her husband, Martin. He told me he had to go on a business trip to the mountains. He didn't really want to go there because he hates cold weather. But he had to, so we packed tons of warm clothes and left. When Martin arrived there, he sent me a photo from his hotel room. I feel something's wrong with this picture, but what exactly? Anderson needed no more than a glance at the photo, and he realized Martin had indeed lied to his wife. How did he figure it out? There are palm trees outside the window. Those trees don't grow in cold climates. Hey, let's use your Sherlock skills to solve these tricky riddles before the time runs out. Which number goes below the pig? The numbers are the letters in the words that represent what noise each animal makes. Cow, moo. Cat, meow. Bird, chirp. Mouse, squeak. And so the pig will be 4 for oink. Add one line to make the equation true. You can cross out the equal sign. Use the line to turn one of the plus signs into a 4. So in the end, you get 545 plus 5 plus 5 equals 555. Or 5 plus 545 plus 5 equals 555. Or 5 plus 5 plus 545. Okay, you get it. Now, can you find the N among all those M's? There it is. Okay, I'll add a little challenge. Cursive. Find the Q among all those G's. That was tough. If it equals 4, has equals 6, maze equals 8, and zebra equals 10, then what does giraffe equal? It's getting more difficult. Each letter in the words equals 2, and you add them up. For giraffe, that's 14. How many squares can you count here? If you found all 11 squares, well, you just set yourself way above average. Another quick cursive search, and then I'll give you a mega challenge. Find the H among all the Bs. Well, that was harder than I thought. Now, try to solve this fruity equation. Feel free to pause the video for more time to think. If you figured out what number each picture represents, you'll know that the apple equals 10. So 3 apples equals 30. Next row, we've got 4 bananas in each bundle. So 10 plus 4 plus 4 equals 18. Third row, 4 bananas minus 2 cherries equals 2. In the end, for the fourth row, we get 1 cherry plus 10 plus 3 bananas equals 14. Hey, I'm ready for a fruit cocktail. If you solve that last one, you'll breeze through this. Move one matchstick to make the equation true. We've got two alternatives here. Take this matchstick off the 9 and use it to turn the minus sign into a plus. We get 3 plus 3 equals 6. Or take this stick off the 6 and make it a 5. Add it to the 9 to create an 8, 
and we get 8 minus 3 equals 5. Hey, my brain feels bigger already. <laughs> The evening before his girlfriend's birthday, Kevin arrived at her office quite late to decorate her desk. He pretended to be a pizza delivery guy to get past the security, but when Kevin finished with the decorations, he realized that the building had already been closed oh, no. and all the guards had left. Kevin found a locker with several tangled wires. Help the guy out. If he just opens the door, the alarm will go off and the police will arrive immediately. One wire turns off the alarm, another is responsible for fire detectors, and the third one turns off the cameras. Which wire should Kevin cut? The green one. Can you figure out what animal is hiding behind this pattern? That's right, it's a dog. Now, let's make this task a bit more complicated. What animal is hiding here? That's right, it's a panda. Police officers are chasing a thief who has just robbed a jewelry store. But he has managed to hide in a women's clothing store and put on a female outfit. Help the officers identify the robber among these women. This elegant lady on the right is wearing the same sneakers as the thief did during his escape. Look at this picture. Can you see any animal? It's a crocodile. Great job. Eric got caught in the rain and decided to hide in an abandoned house. But as soon as he stepped inside, the front door disappeared. A mysterious voice said, the only way to get out of here is to push open one of these doors. But the first door is covered with dangerous acid. The second door is unbearably hot. If he touches the third door, he'll get an electric shock. Which door should Eric choose? The guy needs to take off his rubber boots and put them on his hands. Then he can push the third door. Rubber will protect him from electricity. There are many different animals in this picture, but can you spot identical pairs? This couple of birds, these hares, and the owls. Other creatures don't have identical twins. Look at this picture very attentively. What do you see? Is it a spiral or several concentric circles? These are black and white concentric circles. You probably saw a spiral, but this is just an optical illusion. Try to squint your eyes or move your finger around any of the circles. Daniel came home after work and realized his house had been burgled. The police suggested that the robbery probably took place around lunchtime. The officers questioned four ladies who lived next door. All of them told the police that they had had a road trip together. They had to stop to change a flat tire on their way back from another city, so they got home late at night. But then, the police officer decided to interrogate the ladies separately in different rooms. They heard their answers and arrested them immediately. What question did the officers ask? The women said they had to deal with a flat tire on their way home. When the officers questioned each of them separately, they asked each lady which tire had been damaged. 
and their answers didn't match. Supermarket manager Mike was counting daily revenue late at night. Suddenly, the fluorescent lamp above his head began to blink. Mike climbed on a chair to fix it. But when he touched the lamp, he burned his hand, fell from the chair, and lost consciousness for a while. When he came around, the guy noticed that all the money had been stolen. He called the police and told them his story. But when a police officer arrived, he arrested Mike. Why? Unlike other light bulbs, fluorescent lamps don't heat up. Mike couldn't burn his hand. This means he's lying. Let's test your spatial reasoning. Look at this pyramid. Can you figure out how it looks from above? The third option is correct. What about this figure? The second image is the correct one. Now look at this colorful cube. How does it look from above? The fourth variant is correct. Jennifer worked as a manager in a large supermarket. One morning, she received a strange text message. There's a thief among your customers. Beware. Jennifer ran out of her office and saw three people who looked suspicious. Can you find a thief among them? It's this guy. If his arm was really broken, he wouldn't be able to carry a basket. Take a look at this pattern. Can you find two identical butterflies? They're over there. Relax and take a look at these pictures. Choose the lighthouse you like most. This simple test will help you discover some of your curious personality traits. If you've chosen the first lighthouse, you're an optimist and a very strong-willed person with a warrior mindset. You manifest your best qualities during hard times. You have both confidence and power and generously share your light with those around you. The second choice is the choice of warm and lighthearted individuals. People feel comfortable and safe around you. You're so cute that it's simply impossible to stay angry at you. You overcome difficulties using the power of love. You believe in yourself and in other people, and they feel your support even from a distance. If you've picked the third lighthouse, you're a very grounded and practical person. You rely on your own strength and prefer hard and honest work. But keep in mind that asking for help is not a crime. And if you like the fourth lighthouse, you're a very passionate and creative person. Your emotional intelligence is exceptionally high. Sometimes the world around you can make you feel overwhelmed. Expressing your emotions through journaling and art will help you reach inner balance. Can you find two similar dogs? Here they are. Take a look at these pictures and choose your favorite moon. If you've chosen moon number one, you're a very independent person. You might feel guilty when you ask for help. That's why you prefer solving problems on your own. But does it make you happy and fulfilled? 
If you've opted for moon number two, you live in the moment and chase joy and adventure. But deep down, you might be suppressing the desire for a stable life. Maybe it's time to admit that you're tired of your lifestyle and accept your true needs. If your choice is number three, you're a natural leader. You're talented, smart, and passionate. Unfortunately, subconsciously, you try to block your desire for freedom and independence. It might help if you ask yourself, what responsibilities really bring me joy? And the fourth option is the choice of a very picky person. You're very smart and loyal, but you're not ready to open your heart to anyone. People might think that you're very vulnerable and shy. Maybe it's time to overcome your trust issues and allow yourself to be loved. This pattern is pretty tricky. Can you spot any numbers? It's 82,175. Can you spot any numbers hidden in these symbols? That's right, it's 95,738. Rachel was lying on the bank of a mountain river. Suddenly, a stranger ran up to her and grabbed her bag. Then he jumped into the water and disappeared. Rachel couldn't swim, so she called a police officer. When Rachel finished telling her story, the thief was already on the other side of the river. But the officer called Rachel a liar. Why? Mountain rivers are very fast. The stream would have carried the thief much further down the river. Look at this picture very attentively and find two identical giraffes. Here they are. Can you find the correct shadow? It's over there. Look at these pictures very attentively. Can you spot five differences? Their gloves are different, as well as their skates. The snowman on the left doesn't have a pom-pom on its hat. Their scarves have a bit different patterns. And finally, the snowman on the left has two buttons, while the guy on the right only has one. A dangerous criminal ran away from the police. The detective saw him enter a scientific research center and followed him. They found only three people inside the building. All three claim to be scientists working on a secret research project. Look at these people. Can you figure out which one is the criminal? Each of these scientists has a badge with a photo on their lab coat. And only this guy's photo doesn't match his face. So he's probably the criminal. A strange accident happened during the Olympic Games. Unknown sources claimed that instead of a real athlete, one of the countries had sent a robot to the running competition. Take a look at these two athletes' shoe prints. Can you figure out which prints belong to a robot? The third runner is the robot. Only his footsteps are perfectly symmetrical. This brief personality test will help reveal your current mood. Take a look at these pictures. Choose the one which attracts you most of all. If you've chosen the first one, you're probably trying to reach a compromise in a difficult situation. No worries. 
Your diplomatic skills and big heart will help you bring back peace. If you've picked the second road, you're craving adventure and intense emotions. Trying new hobbies and unusual activities will help you bring bright colors to your life. If you like the third route, you're probably a sensitive and romantic person, craving for a happy and loving relationship. Make sure you've set healthy boundaries and remember to love yourself first. And if you've chosen the fourth road, you're probably overwhelmed with stress and obligations. Meanwhile, your true nature is asking for comfort, solitude, and relaxation.